for joining the Ubuntu Online Summit uh, for the first time this week. Um, we've got three days of, of sessions um, related um, to all that has to do with, uh, with Ubuntu, contributing to Ubuntu and contributing to Ubuntu, um, advocating for Ubuntu. And uh, this week we've moved the, um, the community team's Q&A um, to, uh, to be part of, uh, of the online summit. So that's why we, uh, if you're joining now, you're seeing it at a different time than, than usual. Generally, we'll have this on, on, on Tuesdays. Um, so essentially, the idea of this, uh, of this session is, uh, I'll say, the same as, uh, as each week. Oops, sorry, there's, uh, there's some background noise. Just I wasn't hearing any background noise. OK, sorry about that. Yeah, we're just coming through my headphones probably then. I just had a window open. Right, so uh, so yeah, the idea of this uh, of, of this talk is um, is, uh, is essentially free format. Um, we are the community team at, um, at Canonical. Um, and uh, you should be free to ask us any question related to, um, to Ubuntu open source in general, the only thing that we don't generally answer is support questions, uh, simply because there are better channels um, for that. Um, other than that, um, I'm David Planella. I manage the, um, the community team. And I think I'll let the guys uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so perhaps we can start from, the, from my far, actually from my left, with Michael. All right. Hi, my name is Michael Hall. I'm on the community team also with uh, David and Daniel. Um, have been focusing for the last year or so on app development, but also involved in uh, upstream relationships. Yeah, my name is Daniel Holbach. I live in Berlin in Germany. Um, also part of the community team and have been working on um, app developer mit training materials in the past few, uh, past few weeks. Uh, but I've been on a number of other projects as well. Cool. Somebody is um, asking if DPM is hearing voices. <laughs> yes, I am. It's a bit too late. It's been too many calls. <laughs> I was definitely hearing voices. But, uh, you said but yeah, hearing my voice. I wasn't quite. Yeah, I mean, to put, to put my mind at rest, they were real voices. I just had <laughs> uh, another window with the feed, with the live feed going. So, yeah, it took me a while to find where it was, but it's all good now. I just hear the nice sound of the voices of Daniel and Mike here. Yeah. All right, so um, we mentioned in IRC, but you can ask questions to us uh, anytime. Start them with the word question in all capital letters. If you're watching this on summit.ubuntu.com, then immediately below the video, there will be an IRC widget that you can use to log into the correct chat room and ask your questions there. And we have our first one already, other than is DPM hearing voices. Uh, Marcus15 asks, is there information about Ubuntu Touch features may be integrated to Ubuntu 16.04? So there were several sessions uh, yesterday and today about the features that are going into Unity 8 and Mir, specifically around getting them onto the desktop. Uh, really, it's hard to summarize it all right here, so I'd recommend that you go back and search for them. Uh, there was a desktop Q&A with Will Cook. Uh, there was a Mir uh, catch-up and Q&A with Kevin Gunn. Both of those give a lot of that information. Yeah, you can already, um, if you're running Utopic or Vivid even, you can just install the uh, Ubuntu desktop, no, uh, Unity 8 desktop session mill package, and uh, then you can just, in, in LightDM, you can uh, choose the session and just start Unity 8 on mill on your desktop and see how it works for you, but it's, it's work in progress, so there's probably going to be a lot of things which uh, which don't work yet. I think window management is probably one of the, the biggest ones. So you have everything in full screen right now, but that's also on the mill team's uh, plate right now. But all feedback will be will be much appreciated. All 
Alright. Next up is uh, Akiva. He asks, uh, what new plans for UOS have developed so far? So actually yesterday we scheduled a new session for tomorrow uh, to gather UOS feedback from everybody. So uh, we encourage you all to join that. You can, of course, give us feedback here and now if you want, but we've got a session specifically to talk about uh, what works and what doesn't and what things we might want to change going forward. Um, I understood the question differently. Uh, to me, it sounded like Akiva wanted to ha hear what uh, has been decided at US so far. All right. But I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, well, if it's that, then uh, probably the summaries at the end of tomorrow should give you a good list of those. Yeah, we should uh, probably. Yeah. Trying to think. I know there have been some in the sessions that I was in. Just can't remember them all. Yeah, that's the thing. So we've all been participating in um, in different tracks, um, and we haven't been um, taking part in, for, for example, the platform tracks. So I think, I mean, we can tell you a bit of the things that have been uh, discussed, a bit of the plans that have been discussed on the community track, on the app development track. Um, so, for example, Dan, um, uh, Mike is is, uh, is a track lead for uh, for app development. Uh, Daniel and I um, for community. We can talk a bit. If you're interested, we can we can expand a bit about the things that have been discussed um, there. But I think the best thing is to um, is to watch the summaries tomorrow, which will give you like the overall the overall view. So just let us know, or go back and watch the videos from previous sessions. Everything that's happened on uh, UOS is being recorded, and those videos are stored on YouTube. So you can come back to summit.ubuntu.com anytime and go back and watch videos from previous sessions. All right, so Akiva is asking again, um, question beyond the core apps, uh, what areas need um, contribution? Um, that is a very good uh, Nick's not here, so I'm going to throw it out for him. Uh, we could <laughs> always use more help in QA, writing tests, and running the manual test suite. And that doesn't require a whole lot of uh, technical knowledge either to get involved in. So if uh, contributing through code contributions is a little bit daunting for you, uh, reach out to Nick Skaggs. His nick is uh, balloons on IRC. And he can uh, get you involved in the QA side of things. Yeah. Akiva has already been contributing to, to, to core apps. So, so he might be interested in actually writing, perhaps, um, um, QA tests or autopilot tests or QML tests, perhaps, uh, in that direction. In, in general, I would uh, recommend community.ubuntu.com. It's a page where you can very easily find out um, what, what kind of teams we have in Ubuntu, what they're doing, and uh, what might be interesting to you. But yeah, if, if you're there, there's loads of other options if if, you, if uh, code contributions is a bit too daunting for you. If code contributions aren't daunting to you, though, you've got all kinds of other options. Uh, if you are paying attention to what's going on in apps and core apps, you might also be interested in the work that's going into uh, this platform now and trying your hand at developing a scope. We actually have a contest running right now up through uh, the first or second week of December for scope development. So if you're interested in that, we've got all new documentation and uh, tutorials and templates for you. You can go to developer.ubuntu.com slash showdown to find out more about the contest. And of course, if you're interested in the Convergent story and Unity 8 on the desktop and you want to help us make, make that a reality, uh, you can get involved there too. All of the code for Unity 8 is available to download. You can build it. You can run it in a nested window on top of your regular uh, Unity 7 desktop or any other desktop you happen to be running. You go to uh, unity.ubuntu.com forward slash get involved. You'll find links to the code and instructions to build that. And all the other parts of Ubuntu are open source as well. So uh, if you want to go and fix some of the software, improve it, update it, whatever else, um, you might want to have a look at packaging Ubuntu comp. Yeah. And if this is just too daunting for you to get started. Just join us on the Ubuntu-Community-Team channel, and 
just ask where if you want to get involved or what your interests are, and perhaps we can uh, direct you to the right place. Brilliant. All right, there's a bunch of questions now. Um, what are Ubuntu locos? That's a good one as well. Um, I think all of us have got something to, to say about locos. I think I'll just start because I have to speak the question. Um, but essentially, locos are um, are the network of Ubuntu teams that um, that help promoting Ubuntu uh, across the world. Uh, it's not only about promoting Ubuntu; it's about getting together um, with uh, with people who love Ubuntu as well, that they love open source, and um, and such. It's essentially hanging out with uh, with friends uh, while um, while um, while contributing to to Ubuntu essentially. So local teams. Are sometimes the first um, the first place where people who are hanging out with uh, want to hang out with uh, other people who like Ubuntu as well uh, or Linux in general um, go to, and uh, it's, it's sometimes the first place where people um, get to install Ubuntu for the first time um, at any at the local event, which they might have organized. Um, so locals are. As an essential guys have got lots of good things to say about Locos too. I actually got my start in Ubuntu from my Loco team, the Florida Loco team. I uh, went to a couple of their meetups and got involved. I uh, learned about the Loco team portal, which is loco.ubuntu.com, uh, and got involved in the development of that, and that's how I acquired my Ubuntu membership. Uh, that and other Loco team uh, activities I was involved in. So it's a really good way to get started being a part of the Ubuntu community and contributing to the community side of the project. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, when I moved to Berlin some years ago, I, I noticed that uh, quite a few people were interested in Ubuntu. Um, it's when I talked to a few of them and said, why don't we start a, a local group? And uh, it was it was the, at the time of the Depper release when uh, we didn't have any rooms or any fixed places where we went to. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do the uh, Ubuntu release party in, in Berlin. I had like, I don't know, 50 people show up in my place. It was, it was pretty well, but it was, was really great to, to have uh, that much energy and, and that much crazy ideas in, uh, in one place. And we took it from there with loads of release parties, uh, all kinds of, of activities. So, uh, yeah, I would I would echo what what Michael said. Have a look at local Ubuntu com. See if there's um, a local team in in your area already. You can mail them with all the ideas you have, um, and it, it it really doesn't require huge amounts of 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 work. Um, there's also the the uh, initiative of Ubuntu hours, where you can basically just say, okay. Um, at this time of the week, uh, we meet up in, in this place, and people who are interested in Ubuntu, they can just come there. We hang out, have a, a cup of coffee or beer or something, and uh, have a chat about Ubuntu. So it's really as easy as, as, as that. And all the teams, they have uh, mailing lists and, and forums where you can meet, meet the others. It's, it's a great way of, of uh, being social with Ubuntu. All right. So next one uh, from Akiva as well. What are some things that Ubuntu Touch will have that um, Android that uh, does not have? Uh, oh wow, that's another broad question. I can I can probably mention a couple of things, and I'm sure um, Daniel or, or, or Mike might have their own their own picks of what they like about Ubuntu Touch that hasn't got uh, that, that Android hasn't got. I mean, for me. What I would pick, I mean, first of all, it's uh, it's fully open source uh, system. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's a full Linux distribution as well. Um, there's a terminal <laughs> that you can install from the um, from the uh, from the store without having to do any crazy routing. Um, for me, what I find uh, especially innovative and uh, from from Ubuntu on the phone is uh, the the whole gestures and edges story. 
I find it really easy to swap between applications. Uh, it's not only easy and organic, uh, it's also very um, very visually pleasing as well. It's quite flashy as well if you try the right edge. Um, and uh, it, uh, it has um, um, a different um, security approach um, to Android as well. Um, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I think this would perhaps be the, the, the picks that I, that, I would, that, I would, that I would have. Scopes as well uh, is something that's very innovative, that um, the way that you can get content to users or to yourself uh, or for, for yourself without having to open applications and just, uh, just at, the, at, uh, at your fingertips, essentially. Um, so I'd say perhaps this, this would be my picks. What do you guys think? Um, for me, it would probably be uh, how we deal with security. Um, like in a lot of cases, when you install an app on on Android, uh, it shows you this huge list of of things the app wants to do for you and wants to have access to. And um, on Ubuntu, I feel much more secure because uh, when an app needs certain privileges, it's going to ask me like. Uh, can I know about your location or can I have access to your image files or, or stuff like that. And there's even some more improvements planned, for example, that uh, if an app is recording audio, that you have a visual indication of that. So you know that nobody's eavesdropping on you. So um, for me, that's, that's the most important thing. And uh, it makes Ubuntu much less uh, like a wild, wild west. And that's how I very often feel when, when using when using Android. Yeah, I would uh, really hit the same point. Security, the way we're doing it, is much better than Android, I think. I actually had uh, a bunch of apps on my Android tablet that were waiting for approval to update to the newest version because they added new permissions that they wanted to have. And one of them, it was like a, a Delta app which would track Delta flights. Um, and it wanted access now to my contacts and my pictures or something like that. Something that the app, I got the app just so I can see if my flight's on time. I don't want it to have access to all my contacts. And on Android, you're given two choices. You can either give it the access it wants or you can not use it. And I think with Ubuntu, the fact that you don't have to give permission to install it, you don't need to give permission to update it, you just have to give it permission when it wants to do something. Uh, is a much better solution. That way I can have a flight tracker, and if it says, hey, I want to look at all of your vacation photos, I just say, no, you don't get to, and then I carry on. So I think that's a much better option, a much better uh, model to go by. Um, and also multitasking. Multitasking on a Ubuntu phone is so much nicer than doing it on Android. Um, when I used Android, I had one app at a time open that I was thinking about, and I would do something in it, and I wouldn't switch to another app until I was done with whatever I was doing on that one. Um, whereas on Ubuntu, I regularly have five or six or more apps open and running that I flip back and forth between, just like I do on my desktop. So I think our multitasking model really makes a big difference, um, because it is the same multitasking model as you have on the desktop. And speaking of desktop, uh, one thing that neither of these guys mentioned that I'm looking forward to is the fact that all of this is going to come to the desktop also. It's all going to work together, together. The platform's going to be the same. Um, if you've ever tried to use Android on a desktop or as a desktop environment, uh, you really realize how poorly suited it is to that. And so much of that is fundamental to the way Android was designed and built years ago that it's not going to be an easy thing for them to overcome. And we're not going to be stuck with those same problems. It'll be much easier for us to seamlessly go from one form factor to another. So that's not there yet, but it's one of the things I'm really looking forward to. Excellent. All right. Next question is, uh, again, from Akiva. What happened to the old Ubuntu phone? Why, sorry, to the old Ubuntu font? Why was it axed? Um, after no idea, to be honest. Um, yeah, Ubuntu font is still around, as far as I know. I think he might mean the one 
do you know the one with the old logo? The one that's that's really round? You know the old Ubuntu logo had a different font than no, the, I don't think that was actually a font. I think that was just a graphic somebody put together. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember it seeing it installed as a as a as a font to be used on the system either. So yeah, we're not sure. All right. Are you uh, another question from Akiva? Are you are any of you programming in Go at Canonical? What has your experience been like so far? Um, there's uh, there's a bunch of people programming in Go at uh, at Canonical. I mean, we in the community team we don't do programming as our daily jobs, um, but we do do programming. Um, part of uh, of uh, of Ubuntu that written in Go uh, in Canonical uh, are um, are things that have to do with Juju, uh, to Juju uh, UI and, uh, and Juju projects. We've got also the Ubuntu device flasher tool, which I can't remember the name right now. Well, I think it's called just Ubuntu device flash to, yep. uh, to write, to write um, an image to your phone. Um, and uh, for scopes, we're not yet recommending Go, but we're exploring, um, we're exploring um, having Go as a binding for, for scopes. I myself just started um, a while ago with Go, but I haven't actually programmed. Or, um, or Mike, have you have you been programming much in, in Go at all? Mike, I think you're muted. Sorry but about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there was an online Go tutorial that I went through about a year ago uh, to learn the basics of it. Um, and that's really all that I've done with Go. Uh, I worked with a little bit of Go code in uh, a side project. Um, it was mostly Python, but it had a Go component. It's a nice language. And I think it, it brings in a lot of the best of C, C++, Java, and Python. Uh, but it's a very different language from just about anything else you're coming from. It really it requires kind of a different mindset to get into. But uh, as, as David mentioned, we've got Go bindings for scope development in the works. There's Go bindings for uh, app development so that you can use the Ubuntu UI toolkit uh, that's in the works. So there will be there will start to be a lot more of that. I have almost no, no experience with Go. OK. Um, but, but there's a question from Marcus15. Ubuntu Touch Mobile uh, is arriving, but what about tablets? For example, some transformer tab or something in the future? Um, yes, yeah, as we've mentioned before, we're working on, uh, on, on I mean, we're working on the phone, but at the same time putting, uh, having, having convergence, convergence in, in, in mind. Um, right now, we don't have any public announcement to do regarding to, um, to tablets, but we do have the Nexus 7 as a, as a reference device and that we're still building. Um, and I think and also still, don't we? Sorry, Mike, which one? Don't we still build uh, images for the Nexus 10 also? Actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, so yeah, we've, we've still got regular images built for the tablets. I think the tablet needs a bit more attention than the phone because right now we're all focused on the, on the phone launch for the for the hardware manufacturers that um, that uh, that we announced, um, but as soon as uh, as we've got some something more to tell about uh, the tablet, uh, definitely <laughs> Yeah. Now, probably 80, 90 percent of the code is the same between phone and tablet. Uh, the tablet introduces a few features that are unique to it, such as the side stage, uh, that they're working, but they haven't had the kind of design. Uh, an implementation polish and attention that uh, the phone is getting. So there's work being done on it. It's just not the, the highest priority right now because we need to get these phones out the door first thing. OK. There's another question from Akiva. What the heck is this system D thing I keep hearing about? How does it uh, affect Ubuntu? Um, Mike, I could probably say something about systemd, but I think you know much more about it, or you can do a better job at it. Uh, so for those who don't know 
what system D is or what an init system is. Um, when you boot up your computer, the first thing it does is it runs to your bootloader, then it brings up the kernel, and once the kernel's up, the kernel needs to hand off uh, execution to something that will then bring up all of your other services and processes. Uh, that's called the init system, and for years we have used the uh, system fire init system, which was a collection of shell scripts that it would run one at a time, one after the other, in order based on their file name. And while it worked, it wasn't terribly efficient, uh, and it wouldn't let you do some things that really improved the user experience and the boot time. So some computing options came up. Upstart was one that we developed uh, that we are still using right now, um, and Red Hat used for a little while, and I think Chrome OS uh, used and may still be using. Um, Systemd was a alternative implementation of the same kind of work uh, that's gained favor in a lot of distros. Debian just recently went through a long discussion about which init system D use going forward, and they have settled on system D. So Ubuntu will also be switching over to system D in the near future. As far as a user is concerned, you never see this kind of stuff. The only impact you'll have is if it breaks, which it will hopefully not do. Uh, otherwise, you won't really notice much at all. It's much more lower level than users are going to care about. And I think I managed to explain that all in a way that's not going to cause controversy and flame wars again. No, you did well. <laughs> OK. Um, Halfmas is saying, can you explain what Ubuntu channels people should be on? I see a lot of work on RTM, but nothing on the Utopic channel. Um, I've posted a link on IRC, which should uh, give you some some guidance, which is uh, which is still valid. Some of the things that will will need to be updated on this uh, on this page, uh, because of the fact that uh, that uh, Vivid uh, will ultimately be um, Ubuntu 15.04 um, has already been opened for uh, for development. But essentially, uh, I would recommend, in a nutshell. Um, to use the RTM channels, which uh, which are the ones that um, that are getting most attention. If you're a, de a developer, um, again, as a sort of general advice, um, you should probably be using um, the, um, the proposed channel, the, the channels that have got a, a proposed appended, appended at the end of their name, um, because these are the ones that uh, get um, more, um, more up-to-date um, um, Images and uh, so we're churning images like almost every day on the proposed image. Uh, sorry, on the um, on the develop proposed channels. Um, if you are using your phone for daily use, I would recommend using the develop channels so that um, so that you only get images that have been promoted and that have been guaranteed to have passed uh, the quality criteria um, before promotion, uh, which is uh, promotion is essentially. Um, having passed this um, this quality this quality criteria, uh, and making sure that this is something that uh, that won't have any regressions for users. So yeah, in two words, um, RTM, and if you're a user, um, devel. If you are a developer, develop propose probably. I will say that uh, RTM is going to be going away after a little while um, once the phones start shipping and we don't need a separate channel for those images. And the Vivid channel has just opened. I'm not sure if the Devel alias has been changed to point to Vivid yet or not, um, but that's going to be where the new development happens. So you can stick with uh, Utopic or RTM if you want to, but you're not going to get new features uh, landing in those. Cool. All right. Next question again for Akiva. Akiva is on fire, by the way. <laughs> He's asking uh, the most questions I think we've had in a row uh, for one of these Q&A sessions. Uh, so he's asking, what is this Juju stuff I keep, I keep hearing about? Was this a, what is the practical application of Juju for a regular old desktop user? Um, so you missed some uh, translation questions up there a little oh, bit also. So we just... can go back around to those after answering yeah, the Juju. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave that one for you then, uh, um, Mike. I think you're more. I wish, I wish George was here because he he would 
uh, talking about Juju until your ears fall off. <laughs> yeah. So Juju is, um, they like to describe it as apt-git for the cloud. It's a simple way to install and start web services in a cloud environment. It supports multiple different cloud service providers like Amazon, OpenStack, uh, Microsoft Azure, using the same set of uh, installer scripts. So somebody can write one really good way to install WordPress, and then you can use that to install WordPress on any of these clouds. And it lets you uh, deploy multiple different services and connect them all together automatically. So you can deploy WordPress, and then you can deploy MySQL, and then you can deploy a uh, caching proxy, and you can just connect all three of those different services together, and they know how to interact with each other, and they'll share what information they need uh, to get those connections working, and it'll all just kind of magically work for you. And it's a really cool tool, tool if you're doing anything in the cloud, or you've got multiple uh, servers or services that you have to maintain anywhere. Uh, it's a really neat tool for that, and you should definitely check that out. Excellent. And again, see George Castro on IRC. You can find him in uh, the Hash Juju channel, uh, and he will love to talk to you about it. I'll definitely love to. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the, the translations questions then now. Uh, so Kiva was asking, does working on the translations team need any technical knowledge, or am I just given a list of words that need to be translated? Um, and related to that, does Ubuntu need help with the translations from the community? Uh, so definitely yes. So um, all of the translations for Ubuntu um, are uh, are done by the by the community. We've got Ubuntu well translated to. Um, about 40 languages, I think, um, and uh, different levels of completion of completion for about 100. Um, so the translation community is a huge one in Ubuntu. Uh, it includes work that Ubuntu translators do uh, in Ubuntu, and also work that um, other translators do in uh, upstream projects. Um, they definitely need um, need help, as uh, as as in any other area of uh, area of Ubuntu contribution. Uh, so if you're interested in joining the translations team, um, you'll find all the, all of the information that you need on this page that I'm just going to paste. Um, and uh, essentially, the way you translate Ubuntu is uh, via Launchpad. Um, and, um, and teams organize themselves. They're generally a team for each language. Um, and they might be just um, just independent teams, or they might be part of bigger of bigger local. Um, and the way they, they organize their work is that they look at the translations that need to be done from from Launchpad, um, and then they they get assigned um, translations for a particular app or library or or piece of software. Um, translations are done online. You can also do them offline if you if you wish to do so. You can download them from Launchpad. But mostly, uh, people collaborate on uh, online. And once you've done them, then they get shipped in something that we call language packs, which are distributed to, to all users. So, uh, so translations is also a really nice way of like seeing your way, your work being um, used by millions of users, um, which is pretty nice feeling to have. Um, but yeah, if you're interested more in translations. Um, I was quite involved in translations a while uh, a while ago. I still am doing um, community translations. Um, so if you've got any questions on that, just just get in touch with me anytime. All right. I think the next one is, of course, from Akiva. Uh, is there a Chinese branch of Canonical? I'm not sure if he means of Canonical or of Ubuntu. I think well, I mean like, like both. Yeah, actually. Yeah, so essentially, I mean, we, we do have... Uh, one thing to remember about Ubuntu is that it's a distributed company uh, in the same way that Ubuntu is a distributed project. Um, the, we, share, we share the same, as a company, we share the same... Um, Quite a lot of the same practices and, uh, of course, the same uh, the same ethos. Um, 
we've got people working from all over the world, essentially. And of course, um, China um, is um, is a uh, uh, is one market uh, is one country and one market for for Ubuntu as well. Um, when we're shipping devices, uh, that's quite important uh, as well. Uh, so we have uh, we have offices uh, in China. Um, there are Chinese employees from from Canonical, but we also have um, we also have offices in the in the U.S. in Canada. Um, where else do we have offices in London, of course, uh, in the U.K. Um, so yeah, a bit like all over. The and in terms of it, Ubuntu itself as a distro, I'm oh, sorry, Daniel, go on. No, I, I, ju I just uh, looked it up just to be sure. Uh, in, in China, there's an office in Beijing and one in, in Shanghai. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and Ubuntu as a as a distribution. Uh, to answer the other part of the question, if you were <laughs> asking that one, um, we've got Ubuntu translated into Chinese, as it's translated in any of the other 40 languages. It's, it's got good coverage for. Uh, for for Chinese, we've got a special distro even um, called Ubuntu Kilim, um, which is um, which is used throughout throughout China. Um, you, if you go to freaks.ubuntu.com or insights that want to talk more about uh, about killing. We've got quite a lot of blog posts uh, about what killing uh, is and uh, and the upcoming plans. Okay, the next one is: Any idea whether the phones will be able to work on a large range of providers? So, without having the actual hardware specs available can't really say where it'll work and where it won't. Um, but the, the fact that they have working on this, uh, one's based in Europe and targets the European market, one's based in China and uh, targets the Chinese market. Since neither one of them currently target the US market, and because the US, in all of our brilliance, has used a different uh, wireless frequencies and technology from the rest of the world, uh, I would not expect them to work over here, unfortunately. Which is sad for me, but uh, good for David and Daniel. <laughs> yeah, but we're 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 uh, constantly working in getting more engagement from providers in um, in the U.S. I mean, we don't have any announcement to this uh, at this point, but I uh, say so we're we're actively looking into this. Yeah, it'll come. I mean, we've got um, Verizon and T-Mobile already on our carrier advisory group, so there's interest over here. Uh, both from carriers uh, and OEMs, and of course from us. So it's just a matter of time. And Rick is saying on IRC, phones should work. It's just a matter of getting fast internet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The the actual yeah. voice part of it should work because that's all I think pretty standard at this point. Um, and I think up to 2G data will probably work just fine. But 3G and up uh, is where you're not going to have that kind of support. He also says it's not about the providers. Every pro provider should work. The phones are open, so if you can pop in a SIM, it will work. But in some cases, you will not get 4G. All right. So um, the next question, I'm not sure it's a question, but just to be sure, I'll just pick it up. Uh, there's, um, there's a comment or a question from Witty. I only chose Linux years ago to get rid of that Windows XP. I always hated the console. So how did you manage to get my computer even faster than it was before I upgraded from the 13 um, to the 1410 version? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can answer that one, other than saying that Ubuntu keeps getting awesome, more awesome with uh, its new release. Uh, yeah, I so think yeah. the answer is uh, it's all developed by a bunch of geeks who care about millisecond differences in performance, and uh, who who fall in love with uh, laptops and don't want to upgrade regularly. So uh, it's being built specifically for that use case that makes yours faster. 
Exactly, and and in the phone in particular, there's there's also uh, a focused um, effort to work on improving performance as well. Um, so this this is why you'll see your applications loading faster um, on uh, on the phone. Okay, I'm um, just trying to see if I if missed any. Um, there's another question from Akiva. Um, oh, oh, wait. I was uh, just reposting the question from Ruti. Okay, from Marcus15. Um, has, has MIR got some extra system requirements? Or is the same, or is it the same like XORG? What about old XORG programs, full support, or will it work just with uh, with emulation? All right. Okay, I think I'll leave that one that one to you. You're more of an expert again on Mir and um, display technologies. So Mir has different requirements than XORG. The drivers that you need are going to be different. Uh, but you're not going to require more powerful hardware to run Mir. If anything, it'll probably run just as well or better on the hardware that XORG currently runs on. So Mir is drastically simplified from what XORG is. And you can see it you know, on the phones and tablets, which obviously don't have large amounts of uh, graphics computing power compared to like a, a gaming graphics card. So the system requirements will be different, but I wouldn't say that there will be extra requirements for Mir. Hello, Rick. Hey, hey Rick. Rick. Can you guys hear me at all? Yes. Yeah. Sorry I didn't crash your, your party, but I heard the question about XMIR, and I didn't want to type it all in again, so I thought I'd use the Join Hangout button, which, by the way, I hope everybody feels I have that privilege. But anyway, I think in the meantime, Michael answered it. But um, but I missed it because now I'm in real time instead of in the lag of watching. Yeah. Okay. So they asked um, if it's going to be emulated. So uh, how are we going to deal with X? I didn't get to that oh, part. No, so if you want to think, go ahead. Well, not, not if you know. You look, you guys looked a little stymied, so I thought I'd hop in and answer. No, actually, uh, this, came up, the desktop on that. this came up in the uh, Mirror catch-up from two hours ago, I think, uh, and oh, okay. gave a nice update on that. So if you really want details on what the current level of support is and what the roadmap is, uh, you should go back and rewatch that video. But yeah, essentially, uh, Old XORG programs that don't use a toolkit where they'll automatically work in Mirror, uh, we'll be able to run those through uh, rootless X window. So they'll still be calling uh, X libraries uh, and using the X protocol, but they would just be kind of self-contained in their own little special Mirror window. All right, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no problem. David, do you want to go back and the uh, ones yeah. that we discussed earlier? Yes. So um, there were two that, uh, that we seem to have skipped. So any idea whether uh, F2FS or um, ButterFS will look to move as default file systems, particularly on the Ubuntu Touch phones? Um, that one I'm not sure I can uh, I can answer to be honest. I know that there were talks about uh, having ButterFS as as a default one uh, a while ago, but uh, this is not an area I, I, I generally follow. Um, Daniel or Mike, do you know? I know that the topics come up. I know it's been discussed around the desktop before also. And I think uh, it just gets evaluated every so often. And when it becomes the better choice, then we'll switch. But uh, as of right now, it hasn't been determined to be better than what we currently use. Yep, that's what I know as well. Cool. And then the next one, um, I heard this, uh, there is an X86 tablet in the works with Ubuntu Touch. Any news on that? Um, I've seen, yeah, I've seen, I've seen some articles on uh, on the net talking about 
talking about this. Uh, I'm not sure we've got anything to, to comment on that, to be, to be honest. This is an area where I myself am I'm, I'm, I'm not involved. Um, so I'd say just um, just stay tuned for any announcement on tablets, regardless of whether they are a, a x86 or or on HF. Um, right now, our main focus is um, is the phone, um, and, but we're still continuing to work on, on tablets, as in having and having a um, a regular build of uh, of of the tablets um, um, of the tablet. I was going to say this through, but it's the same code essentially. If you are interested in trying out uh, the new stuff on an x86 uh, tablet or desktop, we do have a Unity Next ISO that you can use. It's um, a standalone uh, image. I would recommend that you not try and switch to it as your uh, daily use desktop yet because it's not ready, but it will let you uh, follow along with the developments that are happening on that end, and it will run on x86 hardware. And if you have a touch screen, laptop, um, depending on the touch screen, it should work. I know Rick has one that he likes to uh, try it on and keep up with the latest. All right, and just another comment. Um, J.D. Strand, um, who's managing the security team uh, at Canonical, is mentioning that we won't be using ButterFS in the, uh, in the short term. Um, Jamie, perhaps you want, you might want to give some some context on this if you uh, if you got it, uh, and then we can just uh, forward it. All right. Uh, so hoping I'm not uh, missing anyone. I'm just going back with Cheeseburg is asking what happened to the videos blog posts from the design team. I'm more interested in the design decision for Unity 8 on both desktops and and mobile uh, and its apps. I'm not sure there's anything that's happened. I mean, recently they've just been posting, still been posting uh, blog posts on design.ubuntu.com. Especially I, I enjoyed them because they posted interviews with the Corax developers, which was something that was, uh, that was, that was really cool. Yeah, they have been focused uh, on the apps lately, not so much the shell. So they've been yeah. getting new designs for the core apps and some of the system apps and really improving the way that all looks. Um, yeah. Mark did mention in his Q&A yesterday that there are some initial uh, design sketches uh, around the desktop that are starting to come out and uh, that he is happy for those to be made available. So uh, hopefully those will be coming out soon from the design team once they're uh, happy to publish them. Cool. Yeah, and if you're interested in the other part, in the apps part, um, you should check out the planning sessions that we've had this week. Uh, on the app development track, where some of the designers um, participated in in them and showcased uh, the new designs for, for apps. And just to wrap up the question on ButterFS, um, JD Strand mentions uh, just to give some more some more context on why uh, ButterFS won't be considered in the in the short term. It's, uh, it's because uh, it's not yet ready for the general case um, in terms of performance. Um, it's not sure about other, the other features or the status of the other features. OK, so Kiva ThinkPad is asking, how does Ubuntu Touch plan to compete with the open Moco? What unique features does Ubuntu Touch offer? Um, I think we've pre we pretty much mentioned them on the on the previous on the previous uh, question on how what features are unique when compared to to Android. I mean, it's about um, security convergence, um, the just uh, gestures or the edges um, um, concept, and uh, I, don't, I don't think OpenMoco is Android. I think that right. right. I'm 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 just talking about uh, unique about the second part of the question. What unique features does Ubuntu Touch offer? I'm not sure how it would compare. Been using it, uh, so if any of you guys know, perhaps we could we could focus on that, or we could try to answer that. I don't know too much about of Moco. So. Uh, about all I know is that they were trying to design an open hardware phone, 
yeah. uh, which is kind of a different focus than what we're working on. Yeah, and it's, I think it, it used to run in Debian. Uh, but yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've heard or I've seen. I actually saw an open open Moku phone a while ago, but um, yeah, I've not heard any news lately. Uh, so I'm not sure we can do a comparison. So Cheeseburg has a thing. Let's go to the next question. Has there been any has there been any work to incorporate KB5 uh, libs into the SDK? Um, as far as I know, the only work that we've done is to uh, so essentially the SDK is using um, Qt. So Qt are the libraries, are the upstream libraries that are part of uh, of the SDK. What KB brings on uh, Brings on top. I don't think there are any particular KV libraries and that that are included right now, or that there's any work planned into that. No, we still use quite a bit of the GNOME uh, plumbing layer and the backend stuff on the desktop, and we use quite a bit of it on the phone too. Uh, just because we've moved to uh, Qt for the UI toolkit doesn't mean that we're planning on switching away from all of the GNOME technology that we've been using. OK, so next one. I'm just trying to scan this quite a lot of questions today, which is good. Um, question from Akiva. What programming languages does the Ubuntu SDK support? Does it support Python? Um, in principle, we don't support um, Python as a language to, to write your applications. Um, we So depending on what you want to write, um, we support um, QML for writing uh, applications, uh, also JavaScript to, to provide some uh, the logic for those applications. Uh, we support C++ as well if you want to write plugins or a native C++ application. Um, and on top of that, you can use the Qt, um, the Qt libraries um, for HTML5 apps. Um, of course, we use HTML5, the, the HTML5, um, all the markup language, and, uh, and JavaScript. Um, you could get Python to work, but it's it's mostly about focus and providing a clear guidance to what. Uh, um, to what one of the reasons why we're uh, it's important to distinguish between what will work and what we support working. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, there's more that you can do than we can commit to providing uh, documentation and resources for. So we've limited our, our scope of what we are going to support in terms of that. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible to run Python apps. In fact, there's a couple of people, um, one in Canonical, one in the community, who have been working on, I think, by other side, um, and being able to package that up inside of a click package to run Python code using a QML front end. All right, so Sheetsburg has got another question. Any updates on the, on the Ubuntu Click Store, like the ability to pay for apps? Donations um, and subscriptions. Um, the Ubuntu Click Store it keeps being uh, keeps being updated. It's uh, it's already functional. If you if you if you've been using the phone, um, you'll have been installing applications from there. Um, pay is uh, is coming. Um, in terms of uh, donations and subscriptions, I'm not too uh, too sure of the of the status or the, the roadmap for that. Yeah, I know pay is being worked on. I don't think uh, anything for donations or subscriptions has been spec'd out and planned yet. Yeah, All right, our is over, so why don't we finish up the questions that have come in so far? Yeah. Quick. Uh, so Cheeseburger has a follow-up. Uh, will books and magazines be sold in the Click Store? I don't think that's been worked out yet either because the, the click tools right now are really geared around installing apps. So we would need a way for things like books and magazines to be installed somewhere different where they would be picked up by an app that can do it. 
though I don't think there's any plans to support that yet, and it may not come to the Click Store when that kind of functionality does become available. Uh, Kiva asks, can I launch Ubuntu Touch apps from the Ubuntu Terminal app, all from within the Ubuntu phone? I think you can, as long as you get the um, command line right, because they use um, a special, I think, app armor launcher to make sure that they're using the correct profile um, yeah. and everything runs under confinement. But as long as you get that right, I think you can run it from the terminal. The terminal itself is not confined, so uh, it can launch apps that use a different app armor profile. Yeah, and another thing that you can do is to launch, uh, rather than using the upstart launcher, you can use also the URA, uh, URL handler as well to, to essentially activate an app. But that's, like I said, that's because the terminal runs unconfined. Uh, regular apps that you install would not be able to execute random uh, other apps or commands outside of its own app armor profile. Right. And the last one also. Yeah. Oh, sorry, did you have something to add to that one, Daniel? No, no, no. I just want to say probably the last one is uh, another question from Akiva. Do you plan on eventually completely getting rid of Debian packaging and having it all replaced by Click packages? Uh, no. No. Like uh, Click packages replace Debian for distro development and system level packaging. It wasn't designed for it. It doesn't have the capabilities to do it. Click was designed for application packaging, so stuff that sits on top of the operating system and the platform layer. So yeah, so probably you, I mean you'll you'll continue seeing this this more and more separation between the platform and applications uh, that run on top of the platform, but it it will. Um, you'll keep seeing this, this mixture between Debian package for the system and uh, Click packages for what runs on top. Even on the, the phone right now where you have system images instead of uh, using apt to install things, uh, those system images are still built from Debian packages, and that's the plan to continue doing that going forward. All right, that's the last of our questions, and uh, we are been out of time for a couple minutes now. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Akiva, for uh, keeping us on our toes and uh, well-fed with questions to get us through this hour. And thank, thank you, everybody else, who uh, provided questions for us also. Uh, we're glad to be able to come on and uh, answer these for you. And we do this every week. Usually it's on Tuesdays at 1500 UTC. Is that right? Um, Whatever. Think so, yeah, yeah. It's somewhere around. <laughs> it's good time, yeah. and that's that's what I know. Uh, but they're usually on ubuntuonair.com. So uh, if you enjoyed this and you want to come back and ask questions again next week, we will be on there. On. T All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Excellent. Thanks, everyone, and see you tomorrow at the at the at the, on the last day of the summit.